So what we're, what we're going to just, I'm just going to do a basic introduction into this. It's a really cool piece of software. I know, you know, it's easy to play with. It's actually really easy to, um, to kind of figure out, but um, it, it really does do some great stuff. So Adobe Fuse basically will put or give you a, an easy way of creating a, a, a character. And that the important thing is that it's a humanoid type character but you can do just a ton of stuff with this. It starts out with the head, um, and, uh, but you can actually go over here to the right and, and click and change things. Um, it, it's, it's a preview app, so it's, it, it's not always working perfectly, but I have taken the characters that I've built, brought them into Blender, and it works pretty darn well. So I've been, I've been pleased with it. So one of the things that you sh can do is you can start with any one of these characters. Now before we go too far into it, for video game design, one of the, one of the big things is hair and clothing. Um, we can't, hair in Blender is a particle. Particles don't go from Blender into Unity at all. Unity has its own particle systems and they're not really great for hair. Um, so one of the things that you want to do is think about hair for your character, how that works. Um, I can help you kind of figure some of that out. Some of these characters have hair on them and some are almost bald and you put hair later. Um, what's cool about Fuse is it does hair as a vertex object and that's actually really important for game design. Um, if I were doing an animation, where I could grow hair in Blender and animate it and do a movie, then I would not like the way Fuse does the hair for some of these characters. But in our case, for the usages that we're going to have in game design, it's actually really good. Um, clothing, however, is going to be an issue for some of you, especially if you want like a flowing cloak or a, like, a, like a long jacket that's going to flow behind your character. That's going to be a problem. Um, and we'll talk a little more about that later on. Um, so anyway, the first thing you, you know, you're going to choose female or male. Um, and they definitely have different body types. And one of the things that I found is I've tried mixing. Like if I start with the male brute and then I start trying to get like the male fit A, if I try to do that one with the brute head, what's interesting is they don't fit very well. So let me show you that. So I'll, I'll, I'll select the, the, the male brute, okay? Pretty cool. Um, now, if I want to swivel around this guy, I have to go over here and click this, and then I can right-click and kind of <laughs> swivel around the head, which is really kind of cool. And then what I can do is, right now I'm in assemble mode, I can go to customize, click on the four arrows, and now I should be able to, um, well, maybe... Maybe I have to be center camera, select items in the assembly. There we go. So I have to go to this arrow tool. I forgot which one it was there for a second. I have to go to this arrow tool and you can see that I can highlight certain parts of the, the head and I can make them bigger, smaller, move them around. It takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to click, hold, and then drag the mouse and it doesn't do it in real time. So I click, hold, and drag to the left and see how it's starting to make the eyes a little bit bigger click, hold, and go down and see how it makes the eyes a little bit uh, smaller. And what you can see is over here, um, I don't know why it's saying arms, um, oh, eyelids closed, open. I'm just adjusting the sliders that are over here in, in, the, in this uh, kind of properties tray. So if I wanted to, I can actually just, I don't have to go over here and click on the eyebrows, I can just shift them up. So if I slide that up, it should work. Oh. Browse in and out. Browse up, down. Browse inner, up or down. So I can bring those down. And see, it's not even working. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so now I can start changing it. And then I can, again, click here. I can right click, swivel around, uh, then go back to the arrow. I can grab his ears. I can drag them up and make them a little bigger. Uh, I can move the entire ear forward or down or whatever. I can make him look like an elf or something like that. So, you know, you have a lot of options with this. Um, so you can change the lobes. You can change how pointy the ears are. 
And then again, if I go and right click and swivel around, you can kind of see how I've changed uh, that. And I can go back to the arrow tool and I can click the nose and I can bring the, the nose tip down. I can make it bigger, okay, or I can make it thinner. So you just have a lot of a really cool customizations um, and they're really, they're really cool. I can take the chin and I can slide it back or forward. Um, make it more square or round. So you can, you can just, it doesn't even look like it's working. So you, I guess you gotta click on it. So I can take the chin and I can make it wider and I can move it down a little bit. So it, you can customize each, each part of the character really, really well. And it's very cool, you know, how you can do this. So then I go back to my assembly and you'll notice the next step is the character's torso. Now, depending upon what I did, notice I chose the male brute head. If I then go to, you know, like the male scan three, and I choose that, what you'll notice is, see how the neck doesn't fit? <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Okay. So that's where it's, it, you know, honestly, they give you the option to kind of do mix and match, but a lot of times it doesn't work very well. So you, once you, especially with the brute, if you start with the brute, you're pretty much stuck because his body size is just so much bigger than all the others. You're kind of stuck. I could probably go back, um, close the leg. Let's let's um, go back to the head, and instead I can just choose uh, the male skin. I could probably choose the male fit A, and then the skin one, and that works a lot better. So I ha what I have is I have the male fit head and then the torso is the um, male scan one but I want one I might want somebody who's a little bit more muscular whatever you know and then you can see he's got some and honestly if you've got clothing depending upon the clothing and stuff the body type might not even matter at all whether he's muscular or not it, it probably won't um, <clears throat> so you know, you just keep going. But then you can do all sorts of other stuff if you want to, um, you know, make his, his pecs bigger, make his waist wider. I mean, you really do have complete control over, see, I can make him a little skinnier. I can bring his waist up or down. Um, it really is very cool. Wow, he looks like he's really sucking his gut in there. It's like, take my picture. <gasps> anyway, so, um, but you know, you have that option to really do a lot of different customizations with the face, the arms, the legs, and everything. So let's just continue. So I started with the fit body. We're just going to continue with the fit body. So I'm going to grab fit legs and then fit arms. And then now you can go back in and you can customize each piece. So if I want to click on the arms, I can customize the arms, <coughs> scroll in, middle click to move up, and uh, Right click just kind of flies you in. In order to, to like swir swivel around, you have to select that tool, which bothers me. Um, I wish there was a keystroke for it. Maybe there is, and I don't know. But see, I can make his arms a little thinner. I can make his arms a little shorter, a little bit longer. So I find that it's really handy once you start getting all this together. Get all the legs, the arms, and everything together. And then as you start to move things, you can really see how it works in relationship with all the different body parts, which I think is very helpful you know, widen his neck, make his neck a little thinner. There's just so much that you can do. It's really cool. So anyway, now, one of the things you want to do once you start getting into this is you do want to save it, okay? Save as, and uh, I don't recommend, you, well, I mean, you can put it in your video game design folder. I don't think Unity will open a fuse object directly. That'd be an interesting thing to try, but I don't think they're there yet. So I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now. But you guys would want to save it in the video game folder. Oops, there we go. Um, and I would make a new folder, and I would call this uh, character. Oops, I already have a folder um, called character. So we'll just put it in new folder for now, and I'll call it character. Okay, I'm really creative today with my naming. But remember, good names, organization, trumps creativity all the time when it comes to this sort of thing. Okay, so now... Um, now what I can also do is go back to the assembly, or go over to the clothing, and now I can kind of take a look at what kind of clothing they have for my objects. Um, and unfortunately enough, uh, the gender does seem to matter a little bit for them. 
Like, you might see a, a shirt, like the button down here, that you might want, you like better. Uh, that looks like it's a female body. Well, if you click that, it, it does kind of wreck the chest area a little bit, okay? So it'll take a male and give him breasts. Um, you know, you just want to go with that, you know. Um, and it's a lot easier. You could modify it. Now, if it's just an issue of color, that's actually really easy to customize, the color of objects. So we'll, we'll go with that. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, but, you know, so like I love the moto jacket here uh, for one. And, uh, and so I wanted that on a character and it didn't work so well. Yeah. So, you know, you, you do, it is unfortunate. It doesn't just conform to the, to the, to the body size that it is kind of gender based there in, a, in, in some ways, in a weird way. But there, that looks a lot better. So, I mean, you've got options. But anyway, so then I can choose bottoms. Okay. Um, just like there's a boot cut pant, which is pretty cool. Um, nice and simple. Okay. <clears throat> and shoes. You know, there's a bunch of shoes. Now, the inevitable question is, okay, Mr. Weisbrot, that's great. My character's got a robe or my character's got power, you know, like armor on or something like that. Okay, so in that case, what you do is you get, you don't put any clothing on your character at all, which now I'm not sure how I get rid of it. Um, delete where? Backspace? Okay, cool. So I can click on the clothing and hit the backspace key. Cool. So if I, if I had like some custom um, armor or something like that on there, this is what I would do is I would just have the character with no clothing on essentially um, and, and I would just save it like this. Now, last, last thing to kind of get you started. Um, however, if you like had a robe but you wanted, like let's say it was open and flowing, it would be easier to put some sort of clothing on the person um, and that would be that would show up so you might want something like um, uh, you know a simple straight pant uh, pant like that and then a simple t-shirt um, go to the tops and I could just do a, like a simple long sleeve athletic t-shirt or something uh, that's just like a crew neck kind of a thing and then we again we can kind of change it so if I go to customize I can click on it and uh, do, 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 click there. I should be able to scroll, no, clothing. Oh, tech, it's under texture, that's right. Ah, it's been a little while. So what I can do is I can click on the item here and um, I, can, I can change the resolution, which is ha handy. I can also change the colors. So here I've got this shirt and I can take that and I can make it red. And what's cool is, notice it's got different setups. So you have uh, the torso, you have the trim color. So depending upon the, the texture, you could do like, you could do all sorts of kind of crazy stuff. Your collar is a, satin, is a dark color. You could do that like a bright pink. I'm just going as horribly gaudy as possible here. Come on. That's frustrating. You're still on texture. Yeah, I know, but I feel like I should be able to move in where I want. Anyway, that's annoying. So anyway, you can see how I can make the arms, the hem. Each, each, each piece of clothing has a whole different setup. So I can click here, and then you can see um, <clears throat> that it has the main fabric as a denim color. It's got a bunch of colors to it. So you can customize what you want. Now, let me save this, and I'm going to show you how we bring it into Blender, OK? And, and then how you can start to, 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 to size things. So let's say I'm finished and I've got a good setup. I'm going to save it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export it as an OBJ. And that is a file type that's pretty common. And I'm just going to make sure export into the new folder. Um, Remove occluded polygons, pack textures and UV, um, and you want your map size. I, I'd say 2048 is probably pretty good, and you click OK. Boom. 
So now it's going to ask you to do this, and I'll call this character exported and save. So now it's going to export the object, which you can see down here it's doing, um, and uh, it's, it's done. So I'm going to close it. And now if I open up Blender, oops, that's not what I wanted, wrong button. If I open up Blender, you can open up your, remember we talked about your, we were going to bring this guy into our weapon. Okay, so you've got your weapon, whether it's a staff or a bow and arrow. You want to open that file. And then you can go File, Import, uh, Object. Where is it? OBJ. There it is, Wavefront. It's under Wavefront. So click that. I'm going to go to my, um, I'm going to go to my Documents, Desktop, New Folder. Here's my character exported. There's the OBJ file. Double click that. It's going to bring him in, probably pretty big. You can, scale, you can scale your character down. But now you've got this, and it's there. And if I go to the uh, rendered mode, oh, well, yeah, so let me cl click the globe, environmental lighting back on. You can see how the textures kind of come with it. Boy, he's got mascara on. Um, but we can work on that. But then what's cool is I'm going to show you in the future how we're going to put a bone structure inside the character to do poses so that we can then move the body and pose it with the weapon. And then if we get to that, once we get that done, then we can start doing animations where, let's say you've got a bow and arrow, you'll see the arm pull the bow back and then fire and so on and so forth. It'll be pretty cool. So that's where that's... <clears throat> We'll get there, but you, you get the idea how you can bring him in, or her in, or it, whatever your character is, bring it into your Blender file with your weapon, and then you can start to get it ready for Unity. Once I save this, you can then go to Unity, and you'll see your weapon change. And all of a sudden, the body will be there with all the textures and everything. It's really pretty cool. All right, so. Um, it works out pretty well um, for us as far as importing in, in a Blender. And honestly, if, you've got, if you keep your character simple, it shouldn't take too long. Now, one last thing. If I were, say, to put armor around this person or something like that, it's as easy as just creating more objects. So um, I would go in here. Oh, let's get out of this. So I'd go to Solid. Okay. I would add, let's say, a, a sphere or a cylinder here. Let's say I was going to do armor on his, on his arms, OK? Um, OK, I'm going to do really, you know, yeah, real, real, real simple stuff. But OK, so I could do that. And, and I would want it to be hollow. But then I could put it over his arms. Let's just say like it's an old school knight armor or something like that. Um, then I could literally take it, put it on his arm, make it hollow. And then when we do what's called the skeleton or the, the rigging for the inverse kinematics, the armature, we can apply the bones to move with the body. And then they can be separate objects and they'll all be applied at the same time. So that's what's really kind of cool. One last thing that you probably will notice, and then I'll let you go, is if I get out of this here, let's just delete that. If I click on my, my character here, it says tops. Um, and then if I open that up, actually, there's, you, you, oh, it's not. You just see that there are different objects. So you've got body, tops, bottom. And if I turn those off, it literally disappears. So it's take, what's cool is it's taken the clothing and it's kind of made it one object. It's wrapped it around the body type, which actually, in a lot of ways, for our game design type stuff, makes things a lot easier. Does this kind of make sense, at least as an intro? You'll have to play with it to get started. Once you get started, I think for a lot of you, you'll really understand it pretty quickly. All right, let's get back to work. <laughs>